How badly has Europe, in broad terms, been affected by neoliberalism over the last 40 years? I think it's been catastrophic. I think it's destroyed so much. Yeah, we see it less. I live in a wealthy city, you live in a wealthy city. But what's going on in the countryside, it's not only, you know, these Baltic states, which lose about 25 to 30 percent of the population because they all have to leave to find jobs in Romania. Uh, we're talking about the countryside. You have it in the north of England. We have it uh, here in, in East Germany. There's always a joke about the supermarkets where they used to have just loads of baby goods. They don't anymore. They have nappies not for babies but for you know, the elderly. And this is going on and it's, it's just depopulation. We don't talk about it. We don't see this. The fact that in many nations the parents have to leave for work, immigrate, and you know, the children are left there with their uh, grandparents and the relationship to their family is via, or to the parents, is via Skype. All these social elements, the mental health, it's one of the worst medical afflictions of Europe right now and it's on the increase and you see it. It's the environment, it's everything and you just see how whenever there's a question of what people want, what corporations want, we know who's going to win. And that's especially true of the EU. I mean, they make a slight compromise, but um, they'll push it through, whatever it is. I know this is uh, frowned upon as populist or as fascist. A lot of it comes down to simple corruption. I will dare to say I don't think there's any major law, any major contract given by the government of Germany where corruption is not involved. I think much of this is true of the EU. We keep seeing you know, moments of it, of corruption, but a lot of it's legal corruption. Mm -hmm.